time is of the essence in any GAN chart, and therefore we added a custom date scale to the Power GAN chart for Power BI. Curious to see how you can use it? Let's have a look. Here you see a straightforward example of the Power GAN chart in Power BI. Got a couple of projects, and one of the projects, Project D, is split out in a couple of phases. And on the top of the screen, you can see that we have, in this case, the years and the months uh, to show where a certain uh, task fits and uh, when it starts and when it ends. But in this case, we don't want to see the years and the months, but actually we would like to make a combination of quarters and week numbers. And this doesn't have to be the standard way how to assign week numbers like the ISO standard is, but it could be anything. Maybe you have your own fiscal years or whatsoever. So anything that is related to a date can be used in this case. And to be able to do so, the first thing we need is a timetable, a separate timetable that actually will specify for each of the individual elements on the lowest level of our time scale what it actually will do. Let's have a look what I have here. So besides the data that I need for the GAN chart, I've got this month table, and here you see an example of a month table, which basically contains one row for each of the individual date items or time items at the lowest level. So in this case, you see that we've got uh, the days of July, and then uh, of each of those days, we have a year, a quarter of the year, a quarter and a year field, uh, an integer uh, value of the, of the date, and then we have got some special fields there. So the initial of the weekday and the ISO week number. We need to make sure that in our data model, we actually link our Ghent data with the month table. So we need to make sure that there's this, this kind of relationship so that actually the month and the Ghent uh, data are linked and that we know uh, which one to use. Okay, so here we have our, uh, our Ghent chart and uh, to, to assign an individual uh, custom scale, we need to go all the way down through all the different properties. And you see at the bottom of the screen that there's this field called custom scale date and custom scale groups. And the first thing we need to do is enter the custom scale date. So let's open up our month table. It actually asks us to specify the field, which is the key to our month table. In this case, the individual dates. So let's pick up the dates and let's add it to the custom scale date. And right away, you'll see this warning. You don't have to get nervous because of the warning. It's only to help you out because in general, Power BI tends to aggregate all the data that we have. Uh, and in this case, we don't want to aggregate. We actually want to keep all the individual days. And like you see here on the text, we need to make sure that the custom scale date, the one that we just dragged in, needs to be set on don't summarize and show items with no data. So let's have a look. Let's open them up. And you see that don't summarize is already selected. So if it's not selected, and if it's already like here, you can keep it like it is. And the other field that we need to check is show items with no data. And here we see it's not checked yet. So let's check it out. There you go. And the moment we did this, I don't know if you have seen the change in the screen. So first of all, the warning goes away. That's a good sign. And second of all, you see these very fine lines at the top of the screen. And it actually means that it recognized that these are the individual days. So now we have all these individual days there. And now we are ready to add our own custom skill groups. So for instance, maybe I would like to use the ISO week number. And if I drag that into the custom skill groups, there you go. Again, I get a warning. The same happens here. I need to make sure that the ISO week number is on don't summarize and show items with no data. Again, Otherwise, there is no way how we can anticipate on um, the fields that we might be missing, etc. So there you go. And if we do so, now suddenly we see all these weak numbers appear on the top uh, of our Gantt chart. So here you see the weak numbers, and maybe we don't, we don't want to only see the weak numbers. We would also like to have something like the quarter and the year. So let's put that on top. There you go. And now we see that we have a quarter of the year, and individual week numbers appearing on the screen. When we added the custom date scale, we also got these very fine black lines representing all the individual days, or, or in other words, the lowest level of our date scale. But in this case, they are a bit annoying. There's a lot of 
noise there, which doesn't make a lot of sense. So if we go to the options of the visual and we go to the options of date skill, you actually see that there is the first switch there, show only groups. And if we switch this on, you'll actually see that the individual lowest level lines disappear and only the groups that you have specified, in this case the quarters and the week numbers, will appear. So there you go. There we have our custom date scale defined for our Gantt chart. And uh, this could be anything, by the way. So here it was week numbers and quarters. But this is anything that makes sense for you or your environment. You can apply it in this form. The previous example was pretty basic. And we got week numbers and quarters. But if we talk about a date scale, or maybe even better, a time scale, we could go even further than that. Basically, it's any classification you could give to a time or a date. The example you see here is actually something based on time, on hours of the day. If I show you the table, as you can see here, the individual tasks start and end at a specific time of day. And that's what we are uh, looking at in the, uh, in the Gantt chart. This time, my date table, or in this case, maybe a better name would be the timetable, is that every row represents a single hour. And as you can see, uh, I classified every hour of the day, whether it's night, morning, afternoon, or evening. Again, it's arbitrary how you classify this, to simply how I have done it. Uh, the day of the month, the month, the year, the hour, obviously, but also the date without the time. And let's add this then to the custom date skill that we have in this power again chart. So first of all, let's take the key, which is the time itself. So let's put it in there. And again, as you're already used to now, is that we get this warning. So we need to check if it's don't summarize, that's on, and then show items with no data. And if we switch it on, you'll see actually that we get these fine back lines in this case. Okay, so apparently the link is working. Eh? So the table is working. And now let's add our groups there. So let's do day part. And let's add it. And again, I get my message. Don't summarize. Show items with no data. There you go. And here you have it. We see night, morning, afternoon, evening. Night, where? The, the sequence you would expect. And in this case, we also want to include the actual date there. So let's drag the date in here as well. And put it on top of the date part the date parts there you go and for some reason it's now taking year but i want to have the individual dates there you go and now you see that we have the individual dates and the day parts and it shows us how it's distributed or how it's being used and obviously everything else works exactly the same way yeah? so if i take the zoom slider and i zoom into a specific moment or a specific day like in this case, Friday, December 3rd, 2021. There you go. And we still will be using our own custom date scale. I hope this clarifies how you can use these custom date scales and how you can apply them. And in the end, anything you think of, any classification you think of around dates or times can be applied here and can be used as a scale in your Gantt chart. I hope you enjoyed this video and I wish you all the luck with your custom date scales.